Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the first official, like the first official official episode of Lynx Lounge. Uh, today, I'm going to be having a very thick concoction uh, eggnog. It's the season. Eggnog White Russian. Kind of hard to beat. I make homemade Kahlua, you put it in there, a little vodka, a little eggnog. Mm, delicious. So before we get into the actual game portion of the show, I thought I'd like to take this first episode to kind of go over some like variations of the, um, actually the lifespan of the Lynx itself. Uh, obviously it went through two different models. This is the first model here, this is model one. Um, you can see the size of this thing quite large, right? And then model two is this one right here. Now this is a special model because this actually was my original uh, Lynx 2. I bought the Lynx 2 after I lost the Lynx 1 in a taxi cab in Boston. I, for years I blamed my little brother. He was supposed to be taking care of the Lynx, but uh, you know, who knows? It, we were traveling and I could have lost it, but I like to put that blame on him. So for years, he's, he's had that guilt. This is my original one, and recently it got a uh, overhaul by McWill. And um, I'll post his information down below, but basically he put a brand new screen in for me. Um, just, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful screen. Those of you who played the links before, uh, remember the screen was a little muddy and you had to like play it at this like crazy like really weird angle to kind of like really make it look good you know I mean that's just that's what we had to do you know um, and then also I've got a VGA out here which is amazing because every single piece of game footage that you see here on the Lynx Lounge know for a fact that it is the real deal coming out of the Lynx. It's not emulation I didn't get it from the web or anything like that. It's coming from this guy right here. Obviously, uh, the Lynx 1 and the Lynx 2, they're very similar, uh, similar layout. The button design is a little bit different. They're square on the two, they're round. It's all the same buttons. I mean, it's basically all, they're all in the same place. However, um, some funky things about the Lynx 1 is they had this really interesting, um, I won't say interesting, but, this bizarre hatch where you would put the games in. And uh, we'll go over the games a little bit later, but basically the first initial games that they had were flat and they didn't have any lip or curve on them. They had very little, little kind of like dots for you to grab on, but sometimes the, the games would get stuck in there and it was very hard to get the game out, you know. Um, again, that was something that you had to live with because uh, you were pretty cool to have a you know, color portable system. They kind of uh, redesigned that on the Lynx 2. They made the back open, so, um, and then they started to lip the games. So I really encourage you to check out the website Atari.io. It is a beautifully designed website that really breaks down every single Atari product, specs, colors, processing power, all that stuff. I'm not gonna bore you with that because I'm gonna send you to that link right below here and you're gonna go and you're gonna check it out and you're gonna be blown away by what you learn. This thing was very, very underrated. It was amazing. In 1989, this thing was a 16-bit machine, okay? We were still dealing with Nintendo at that time, which was 8-bit. This is 16-bit, portable, to go. It had scaling sprites, you know, like uh, Super Nintendo was all about Mode 7, right? But that was way, way after this. The Lynx 1, I don't have one for the Lynx 2, but I have one for the Lynx 1. It had a, um, a sunshade. So if you wanted to, you know, hang out by the pool or, you know, wherever outside and play without the glare of the sun, you know, you would just lock this thing in and pop, pop it open and put it together like this and there it is. See, you have, you got the sunshade. See that? Isn't that cool? They must have known that this was the angle that you needed to, to play it at anyway to see it. So, you know, it kind of makes perfect sense. They knew. The designers knew. Pew pew. This is the case that came with the Lynx 1. Um, I don't know where my Lynx 2 case got to, but um, I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Lynx 1 case, beautiful design. 
Um, it's got like the two pockets up front so you could either put batteries or um, or games and if you were taking it on the go you would be eating up a lot of batteries. You put the links in here like this, you know, it just goes right in, boom. Isn't that nice? It's so handsome. It had uh, some bizarre things on the back though. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. It had a, a belt loop, you know, that you could just put put your, you lock it onto your belt and then you'd walk to your friend's house or you'd ride your skateboard over uh, with this on. I'm not too sure about this look because I have to tell you, I went through a pretty serious awkward phase. I don't think clipping this thing onto my belt would have helped at all. In fact, it would have, it would probably have hurt me quite a bit. Um, also, there's this strange, like, uh, like wrist loop thing, and you could, you you could put it over your wrist like this and dangle it, you know, kind of like a purse. But I think it's cooler than a purse because it's a links, you know. Or you know, if you want to be sporty, you just you you flip it over your back, and then you you uh, go to the the, the gym and uh, say hello to everybody and show off your links. That sounded weird. Why would you go to the gym? To f that is bizarre. I, don't, I can't believe I said that. Anyway, the case that I like the best is the um, this one right here, this big dog. It had a strap. I don't know where the strap went. Um, had a sweet handle on it and then it opened up and you had put all your accessories in it. You could put your um, your power cords, which, let's be honest, if you had a Sega Game Gear or a Atari Lynx back in the day, you were not playing it on batteries. But this is great. You've got all the games up here. I've got some of my games in here. Um, let's talk about the Com Lynx. The Com Lynx was something that came with the Lynx. And this thing is totally awesome because you had the ability to link 18 Lynx together to play multiplayer games. Think about that for a second. Think about that. My problem was, was I didn't have anybody to link up to. I was the only one that had a Lynx. I didn't have anything else. I didn't have any friend. I had no friends. I had no friends that had other Lynx. So I, you know, what do you do? You just keep, you hold on to this. I don't think I've even ever untwisted it, but here it is. Just in case I get a friend someday. No big deal. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get a friend. Here it is. Here's a game that ha this is right here. Gauntlet. Gauntlet. Link one to four players. Link up! That's what it says. Right there. Let's take a look at how these games differ. Uh, they're both the same size, right? This is from the launch right here. What do I got here? Chips Challenge, okay? Chips Challenge and Miss Pac-Man. Now, uh, they look like they're the same size, right? See my eyes? Hello. Chips Challenge from launch and Miss Pac-Man from later on. Same size except the top. The top is different. Like I said, the first cartridges were just straight and they had little bumps on them for you to grab onto. It was kind of slick, it was hard to get out. Then later they came out with this lipped ridge that kind of jutted up for ease of access to get it out. So you get your game, you pull your game out. Mmm, that's good eggnog, yeah. I never realized how different all of the game manuals are for the Lynx. They're really, they're really all over the place. From what I understand about the printing process that was happening at Atari when it came to these game manuals, especially the first round um, that they did, like the first, like the launch titles and stuff, um, and then even into the um, the early 90s, they were using the same color palette, the black, white, and red, as the 7800. So, um, you have, you know, they're all some, these are big here, right? Um, Gates' Endicon, Electrocop, California Games doesn't even have a, uh, it's just blank. There's nothing, there's no graphics on it. Like this was the pack-in, right? Um, and then, um, then you have like Chips Challenge. And that was 89, but it's, it's like, uh, it's small, right? It's still black, white, and red, but it's, but it's smaller from like, 1989 to 1991, they were doing 
them all the same size. Now they're all smaller, like Chip's Challenge, right? Um, but they're still black, white, and red. And then you have these different variations where they're giving you um, posters. Like these really amazing posters, and I don't know how these never got on my wall and, you know, um, got damaged. But you'd get this really great poster. Right? You get this really great poster, checkered flag, and then on the back, um, it would have the, the, the instructions on the game. Super cool. And I have a few of these. I've got, uh, what do I got here? Checkered flag, scrapyard dog, because, you know, that's a classic. Um, what do we got here? Xbots, awesome. Hard driving. Hard driving. Yeah, we'll get into that one later. Cyberball, tur tournament cyberball. That looks awesome. Good stuff there. Then it looks like in 1992 they completely changed the design. It was just black and white. Uh, they were the same size, but now they're multi language. So, like, weird, right? Like, why wouldn't they be the same? Well, I just wanted to kind of show you guys like all these different things and I'd love to hear your comments and, and to, you know, maybe you guys know more than I do as far as, um, you know, why there's so many different variations on, on the life and times of, of the Lynx. And, you know, of course, obviously it didn't last. And um, we all know the story of Atari and how things kind of folded. Is this sort of a little glimpse of the confusion that possibly might have been happening, you know, in the company itself? I don't know. Um, time will tell. Time will tell. I think time did tell, actually, and they went bankrupt, but, you know, what are you going to do? Anyway, that's it. Uh, that's it for the first episode. Variations on the Lynx Lounge. Thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, I hope you uh, had a cocktail, too, while you were watching it. And um, we'll be back with more games. I'm going to do the launch titles uh, right up front. And then we're going to get into some of my favorite uh, Lynx games. And then also, you know, be sure to tune in to the Jag Bar, which is another show that I do uh, dealing with my Atari Jaguar collection. See me at the Jag Bar or the Lynx Lounge. Either way, I'm going to give you all the Atari information that you need. And if not, I'll just send you to some website or something like that. Cheers. Thank you all for uh, tuning in, and uh, we'll see you on the next Lynx Lounge. Take it easy, everybody.